Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. So it's a beautiful day out in the canyons today. We've got Peter here and this is his extremely exciting 2008 Lotus Exige S240, right? That's right. Um, so tell me about your car. Uh, so I bought it in 2011, had it for about five years. Um, it's extremely lightweight, about 2,000 pounds. Uh, it's been upgraded with this uh, Blade 300 kit from Sector 111. Uh, it's been completely awesome. The about 300 horsepower in a 2,000 pound car makes it really fast. And I love the Lotus because it's a you know, really based, purest driving car, no no power steering, super lightweight. You said yeah, you used to have a Lotus Evora S too that you recently just sold, right? That's right. So uh, yeah. where, where do the two cars fit in like your lineup of, of sports cars? Uh, this is sort of the fun car for every now and then, take it to the canyon roads or uh, messing around. Yeah. Yeah, that's not exactly a daily driver, although some people do do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> so the Evora S is more your like a uh, more luxury yep, sports it's car. More like a GT. Yep, GT Touring. So I actually daily drove that one. Oh, you did. I did. Yeah. Okay. So this car, being an Exige, of course, it has the um, the two ZZ. The two ZZ. Right? One point eight. One point eight liter Celica, supercharged. It's the same engine as the Celica GTS. The one point okay. eight. Okay, so in this application in stock form, like the name suggests, S240, it made 240 horsepower. Yeah. I think around 170 or so foot-pounds of torque, but with the Blade 300 upgrade, uh, upgraded intercooler, uh -huh. um, injectors. Bigger and injectors, uh, smaller pulley for the supercharger, and a uh, reflash. Okay, so now you're put, pushing out about 300 crank. That's right. For a 2,000 pound car. So just to put it in perspective, the 400 horsepower supercharged S2000 that I recently drove. The power to weight of that is very similar to this, but this one being a good 800 pounds lighter than that should feel even quicker. And being mid-engine should have better traction. Um, so I'm really excited for this. You know, I've, I've always been a huge fan of Lotuses. And you know, when you offered this, I was like, bingo. Cause like, this is the one car I've really wanted to drive. Yeah, let's take it for a drive and see how it does. Okay. So, there is absolutely zero rear visibility through the rear windshield. So you gotta rely on your mirrors. Luckily, when you drive around a, a bright red Lotus, or a bright blue Lotus rather, people see you. They'll get out of your way. So immediately, the first thing you notice when you get in this car is just how incredibly compact it is. I mean, even the steering wheel is the size of like a, a Logitech like G27 gaming wheel. It's just so incredibly tiny. This car has an aluminum top, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get in, like these sills here are really obstructive in terms of trying to get yourself in and out of the driver's seat. Driving around at low speed, the car is really easy to drive in terms of its controls. I mean, the steering, even though it's non-power assisted, it's really light, much lighter than my NSX. Pedal layout's good, everything's light, the clutch is easy. The suspension is definitely on the, on the not even the stiffer side, like it's one of the stiffest stock suspensions I've ever driven, but it gives you a sense that this car is basically a go-kart for the street. Front visibility is absolutely perfect. Um, it's very reminiscent of the NSX, except this has even larger fender or wheel arches, so you can see exactly where the front end is at all times. If I was probably six foot or something, it would be a little harder to see out the top because uh, the front windshield is very, very narrow. The shifter is pretty easy to use, but because it is a cable linkage, it's not exactly the most direct. It does jiggle quite a bit when you're, when you're in gear, it's similar to the S2000, but it doesn't give you the same mechanical feeling every time you shift. This car does have quite a few squeaks and rattles in the interior. I mean, I think there's something coming from over here, from yep. maybe a misaligned panel or something. It sounds like it's being held together by glue. And also the engine at low RPMs is very, very buzzy. It doesn't sound refined. Um, it's not exactly the smoothest engine. You do feel a bit of vibration. Um, that being said, you don't really hear any supercharger whine when you're just cruising around. It's definitely not a refined ride by, by any stretch of the imagination. It honestly makes a stock S2000, even an AP1, feel like a really nice car. Yeah, it's not purchased for comfort, it's just for... Right, if you purchase this thing as a luxury sports car, then you've done the wrong, you've done the wrong thing. So what initially drew you to Lotus as a company in general, and what drew you to this particular car? Uh, well, I've been looking around for an Exige a long time, just because it's the most sort of extreme version. Go 
bigger go home, right? Right. This this particular color of blue, Persian blue, I found it's really striking. Most of the cars are uh, you know, bright neon orange or yellow, which yeah. is which is pretty cool. But this color is gorgeous. Lotus is like uh, is there's very low volume. There's very few of them in the country. Only a couple hundred of these, so there's a, it's always unique. Never really come across other ones driving around. Yeah. All right. So this car is pretty much totally unbearable driving around on this road at low speed. So <laughs> we're gonna have to push it a little harder and see how it really does. Really 
a dedicated track car. I think in canyon driving, it is fun, yes, but just going back to my point earlier about the suspension setup, I think it is just a little too stiff. Once you wind it out to 8,000, all of that goes away. These brakes are ridiculous. <laughs> so what are your future plans for this car? Just keep it, keep it the way it is. Keep it the way it is. Um, it's actually gone up in value quite a bit since oh, I bought it. I bought it in 2011 for around 45,000. 45,000? Yeah, really? they're probably worth closer to 60 now. This was originally a seventy thousand dollar car. Yes, it, it depreciated like any other car would. And then now, since they're no longer being made, right, and they're getting harder to find, and like even small wrecks tend to total them. Yeah. So they're, they they dwind, their numbers dwindle. Well, that's a good investment, man. Well, <laughs> it, it certainly has covered uh, insurance, registration, and yeah. such. I think it's a great way to hold on to uh, the past of manual transmissions. Right. I mean. They're not going to make cars like this anymore. No. No power steering, stick shift, uh, 2,000 pounds, 8,000 RPM redline. It's a thing of the past. I mean, there are a few cars out there today that still have those qualities. Um, maybe GT4, for example, um, the 911R, the Mustang uh, GT350. Still much heavier. Much, much heavier cars, all of them. So. It's also a really a simple car. It's easy to work on, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. Even though it's a mid engine. Yeah, the, um, the under tray bolts off, and then you have full access to the whole engine. Oh. And it's a, it's a you know, Toyota part, Toyota oil filters. Right. So hasn't been a pretty reliable car for Yeah, you? I have had no problems with it. Also, I think this is the, the lowest seating position I've ever been in. <laughs> um, pretty similar on par with the NSX, maybe a little lower than that. It makes the S2000 feel like a little bit of a boat, I'm not gonna lie. Those are crazy words coming out of my mouth. Uh, so yeah, thanks again, Peter, for You're letting welcome. me drive your uh, Lotus Exige. I'll be honest, this wasn't on the bucket list <laughs> because I thought it, it wouldn't be attainable for a while for me until I grew my channel to the point where, you know, people were more comfortable with me driving these more exotic cars. So yeah, this is a this is actually a really um, special opportunity that you give me, so thanks a lot. You're welcome. Amazing car, amazing car. I just, this this car belongs on a track. <laughs> it doesn't, it just doesn't do that well in these roads where it's a little tighter and, and there's little bumps that upset the suspension. Yeah. But I think if you want to have fun with this, honestly, you should, at least in autocross or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a lot right. of fun. Yeah. So thanks again, guys, for watching my video. If you liked it, please comment and subscribe. And hopefully this car sets a precedent for some future cars that I'll be driving. I'd really like to compare it to a Cayman, a Cayman S. I mean, I know it's a very different car, but that's a car I've been wanting to drive for a long time. So if you have one, hit me up. See you guys next time.